Thank you so much. Uh, hello and welcome. We are uh, still broadcasting from E3 2014. Uh, thank you to everyone here joining us in the booth. And uh, hey, and across the power of the internet, uh, where there is never a hateful comment anywhere, it's a totally safe place. Uh, so I have a very special guest today. Hello, Dom. How are you, sir? Hi, Ryan. You are the creative director at Pixel Opus, and you guys have had kind of a, a big E3 so far. We have, that's right. It's been incredibly exciting. You, um, uh, you guys just not only revealed and twined, right. but then you, you like just dropped the mic and were like, also, we're out on PS4 now. <laughs> and then that was it. How was that, how was that for you guys? Uh, it was really, really exciting. Um, you know, it's a lot of guys, first E3 on the team. And so to be able to announce the game, show the world what it is, and then also say, and you can buy it right now, you don't have to wait. It's a nice gamer-friendly way of getting a game out there. Awesome. Well, why don't, I mean, the, the team itself is actually quite an interesting part of this story. So Absolutely. why don't you tell us about how this team came together? So about two years ago, uh, the San Mateo studio began an incubation program. Uh, and some of the people I work with, Alex Lee and Ken Nagaki, began that as a way of trying to find innovative ways of making games and, and trying to get up to speed with what the latest state of gaming education is in America. Um, and that actually led to this team being brought in as interns. And then after they made a few prototypes, I think they recognized the amazing talent they have and they hired them full time. And then myself uh, and another old timer, Jeff Sengali, who's the group You keep saying director. old timer, but you <laughs> couldn't be a hair over 19. <laughs> Clearly. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, so I, I had worked with Jeff Sangali uh, before, and we had a bit of experience working with small teams, and we're also really interested in gaming education. Uh, mm. And so we joined the team, and that was about a year ago, and then here we are with our, with our first game. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I mean, a excellent. Um, yeah, I think also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I read that this team is actually a very diverse set group of students, or graduates, yes. rather. Um, and you were representing a number of different countries yeah. just on this one team alone. Do you want to speak to that and how yeah. it influenced development? It's unlike any group I've worked with in that regard. It's, there's five different countries. So we've got England, America, China, South Korea, India. And because the vision for the game is completely shared, we have a flat hierarchy, mm. you can really feel that cultural diversity living in the game, I think. Um, we've got a, a very... Um, Asian-influenced story, which right. comes from Chinese mythology. Right. We've got the theme of reincarnation, which lives in the level structure. Uh, and that's a very, you know, obviously comes from our Indian background on the team as well. And we also have uh, a much healthier ratio of men and women on the team. So four of the 10 of us are girls as well, which I think really helps. So you've got a much Wonderful. broader appeal to the game, which comes from that. Wonderful. And all that creative energy kind of comes together. And as you yeah. said, it's sort of has coalesced into a shared vision between yeah. all those different ideologies and backgrounds and Absolutely. everything, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, I should have probably started this presentation by explaining what Entwined is. <laughs> so why don't we take a moment, totally on time, talk a little bit about how the game is actually built and how you guys have designed it. So it's a game about two souls who are in love but can't be together. And that idea lives in the, the game design through learning to control these two characters simultaneously. Um, and in the main portion of the game, the left-hand stick controls the fish and the right-hand stick controls the bird. And they never cross over the middle line. So okay. the, the, the hope is that you'll never be confused which stick is doing which. Which sometimes with games where you're controlling two things, you quite often get confused when right. you cross over. Right. So we try to make that as easy and as accessible as possible. And it's really a kind of traditional pure-based skill mechanic in many ways. It's very elegant, simple design. Okay. And you just have to get better and better at negotiating these obstacles that are addictive to fly through and they make nice patterns and gestures. Uh, and then at the end of each level, as you're seeing now, you get to bring the two characters together and they turn into this incredible dragon. Uh, and so each lifetime is very, very different, completely different emotional core uh, with a different art style. And there's a different type of living paint that you can get access to at the end of each level as well. And so we're really hoping that PS4 players enjoy making their own aerial sculptures and then sharing them through the, the share button, which is you know, a great thing to be able to do Beautiful. as well. And I mean, the, uh, the art style is obviously, I mean, if you couldn't tell, it's very colorful. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the team must have just had an absolute blast kind of working with such a broad palette yeah. and, uh, and making it. Can you talk a little bit about like, what inspired some of the art itself and some of those assets? Um, it's, it's, well, the game itself is very abstract. And so one of the challenges with the game was finding an art style 
and a color palette that embraces that, um, can communicate these subtle ideas and this nuanced um, you know, range of emotion, but then let players complete that thought themselves. So we found that when people play the game and they're looking at the art and they're listening to the music, that abstract vision, it kind of comes to them and then they can, fi they can figure out what it means to them and that's what makes it personal. And that, I mean, that's the good thing about abstraction as well. You don't have to be too specific. You don't have to force feed people what the level is meant to feel like. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was the main kind of origin for the art style, was trying to get something that could work with that abstraction and then also work in motion. So Jeff and the art team have had a real challenge trying to design these levels that are constantly moving, uh, but it, it turned out really well. Yeah, and we're, do you want to just describe kind of what we're seeing here? Because we just saw the beginning of the third lifetime, correct? Yes. Okay, awesome. And this is kind of a, would this be typical? I haven't seen, I haven't played the game yet. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's it forgive just me, came please. Out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, tell us about how kind of this, this lifetime is set up and how maybe it compares to some of the other, uh, so the other ones. This, this lifetime is about loneliness, which is why there's an ice feeling to it. It's cold. Um, and each lifetime also has a different design for the obstacle. So these are meant to look like ice shards. And so everything is unique and personalized. And also the, the sound, um, we had a, an amazing composer work with us, Sam Marshall, who created a unique soundtrack for every level. And our sound designer, Greg, also went in and made sure that each time you go through these obstacles, there's a unique sound effect created and a note in there that lets you feel like you're contributing to the soundtrack as well, which helps the immersion. Um, and each one is completely different. So you have that, that variety as you play through all the levels too. It's beautiful. I, I'm, I'm just like mesmerized. It I'll is, just spend the rest of the show staring down at the monitor at our feet. <laughs> um, what, you know, to you personally, what speaks to you strong, uh, strongest about this game? Um, speaks to me? Yeah. Well, I mean, my perspective is different because I was part of making it. So I, the most important thing about making this game was having a small team and finding a way to genuinely share that vision between every single person on the team. And so it's been a really collaborative experience. Everyone can point to something in this game that they did and they're, they're part of owning in a way. And so it's, it's very close to all of us, a very strong connection with it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really emotional experience getting out there as well. No, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't imagine when you reveal this game on such a huge stage and it gets a you know a great reaction and then people can actually just play it that night yeah. which still shocked me by the way <laughs> um, i mean that must have just been amazing for the team what would you say the re how does the rest of the team feel i mean how are they how are they doing they are so excited um, i think for me and jeff one of the biggest privileges of going through this experience with them is getting to see the game industry through their eyes yeah you know it's really healthy to be reminded why we do this. You know, making games is a privilege and it's such a joy to see them so excited. They're full of energy, exuberance. They've got so much passion and we get to sit here and watch it through them and live that with them and it's just been a real joy. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. I think we're out of time, but Dom, I really appreciate it. And Thanks, congratulations Ryan. to you thank and you. the team. Um, and I think actually, why don't we end fittingly with a, a trailer for Entwine. So uh, right. stay with us and, and enjoy.